You're thinking about buying a house here in Ecuador. I think that's great. But maybe you're not sure what you have to do. Well, today we're going to talk to my friend Maria Jose about the things that you need in order to buy a house here in Ecuador. As a matter of fact, there she is. Without further ado, let's get this started. Here we go again. What are the different ways to buy a house here in Ecuador? What alternatives do people from outside the country have when they want to buy a house? So if you're from outside of Ecuador and you're planning to buy a house here, there are different ways you can do it. Also, there are some tips if you are an Ecuadorian and if you are foreign, but I will say that later. First of all, there's cash. You can pay cash because most of the sellers, they will be okay with this, but you have to have a contract so you can establish how the payments are gonna be. The second one are mortgages and they work the same as in any country. But what I will recommend you as a tip, if you are an Ecuadorian and you're living right Right now outside of the country, you can have a mortgage in an Ecuadorian bank. They will give it to you maybe faster than an Ecuadorian sometimes. And if you are a foreign, you can have a mortgage with a bank that also has an establishment in your country and in Ecuador. That's a really easy way to get a mortgage from another country. And most of sellers, they would accept this because they are used to mortgages here. Can you tell us the different prices of houses here in Manta in order to have an idea of how much other houses might cost around the country here in Ecuador? We have middle budget, we have high budget and low budget. Right now we are in a middle budget that will be like $58,000, $60,000. And just changing the location, the price will change. And this is gonna be better or worse for you. It depends on your timing, you know? You have this project that is in the south of Manta. And the place, it's called Manta Sul. There are a lot of housing projects there of the different owners. So we have houses of $75,000, we have houses of $80,000, $95,000, maybe they're around 190 square meter. And there you can like compare just the location, it would change the price. You have some projects that are really high priced, but the places of a high state of the market, they're like high budgets, and those are like in Via San Mateo, they're really close to the sea. We have Alto Jamanta Beach, Ciudad del Mar, this is the city of the sea. So the houses over there are, they're really big, they're like 200 square meters, 300 square meters. The land that you have around your house is really big. We're talking about 1,000 meters, the, just the land of your house. So it's like townhouses, but those are really pricey and it, it's, it's gonna pay off your budget, you know? We have maybe houses from $200,000, $300,000. It can be like $500,000. So those are the really high priced projects in Manta. If you're traveling to the south of Ecuador, maybe you know in Manta, you are passing Santa Marinita, you're going to San Jose, you can buy extensive pieces of land. And if you are from another country, this, this could be a good tip for you because the price over there is not as high. We're talking about maybe 10,000 square meters in $11,000. So these projects are specifically designed for foreign people because they're really quiet places for retirement projects. And we have a place called Jaramijo that is really close to Manta. It's a neighbor of Manta. They have a really big shore to the sea. We have maybe three projects over there. They are like in the first line in front of the sea. You can find houses from $72,000, $80,000, and $89,000. The quantity of square meters of the houses are similar, but the location is maybe better, maybe it's what you're looking for, you know, to live in front of the sea. And we have cheap houses, like two or three different projects. One is around the south, to close to the center of the city. This is a project where you can buy houses from $31,000. These houses are a little smaller than the other houses that I just mentioned but you can see that they're affordable. That's the benefit of it. And they are in a really close place to the center of Manta, as I said. And you have next to this project, a $31,000, you have a $53,000 of two levels houses. 
And those are a really good option too, because the price is affordable. And I just found out about the project that it's not built yet. It's going to be built in 2025. It's going to be finished. But then you can have houses from $45,000 and those are located in the entrance of Manta when you're coming from Puerto Viejo. This can give you an idea of how much the pricing will vary depending on the characteristic and the location. If you want to compare this to other places of Ecuador, you can just do this easy comparison. Puerto Viejo and Manta are cities that are neighbor, they are close to each other. But Puerto Viejo is a city that is mostly developing and Manta and the outsides of Manta are still in process. So there's land for building houses and in Puerto Viejo there's not so much land. So in Puerto Viejo, this, the exact same projects that I just said, it could be pricier. Maybe ten or $20,000 pricier with the same characteristics and the same locations like comparing from a city to another. So if you compare to Guayaquil, if you compare to Quito, those are cities that are maybe totally full development and the city, as I said, not the surroundings. So the price will increase. So if you have a budget, you have to search for the cost of living of each city. Moving on, can you tell us how houses gain or lose value over time here in Ecuador? Here in Ecuador, real estate market behaves in a special way because this is a development country, so we still have land where it's possible to build houses to sell. What most people do, or what most people are searching for, are new houses. If you compare these to other countries, they are like house market because it's a good time to sell or a good time to buy, but that doesn't apply here because it's always a good time to sell. Because the amount of people that don't have houses, the amount of families that don't have houses, it's really higher than the ones they have. That is going to be really relevant to affect how uh, houses are going high or down in prices. Because when you're buying a new house, what are you paying for? The land, what the house costs to build, and what the constructor or the investor, they're winning because they're making an investment and they are trying to sell a product. So it's a new house. What it's going to reflect in that is like, you're not buying an overpriced house or a house that somebody just bought, they make new cabinets, they made like new floors so they could sell it in a higher price. So that's not happening here. What's happening here is location. Location is the most important thing that makes house price go up or down. If you're buying in a place that is already completely developed, the roads are finished, maybe it's a closed urbanization, then you are buying a house at its highest price. And that is not good or bad. It depends on you, on what you are looking for. But that is the highest price that the market is going to give to the house. How do you know that? Because when you go to a bank, the bank, that is the highest amount that it will give you to buy the house. When you're buying a house that is maybe in a place that is still developing and then you're buying the house and when the mayor or the city planification, they are building new streets, they are building new parks, they are making the outer part of your house better, that is going to influence and the price is going up. What is going to make it go down? If you buy the house and you never apply maintenance to it, you are constantly wiping the surfaces with the wrong detergent so they are like degrading. You're not painting the house maybe once a year because here in Manta we have the sea really close to the houses. So you have to do that. And maybe your house is not worth as much as you buy because you're not maybe applying some makeup on it. That would be it. In your opinion, is there a better time to buy a house than others? I think the best time to buy a house is when your income provides you the way to pay the mortgage that you're getting. You have to be really good and really intelligent when you're gaining debt. You have credit card debt, you're buying a car, maybe that's not the best time to buy a house. As a saleswoman, you may think I would say, right now, right now is the best time to buy a house. And it is, because here in Ecuador we have a lot of banks Banco de Pichincha, Banco de Pacifico, BES, Cooperativas, they all give mortgage to buy houses and they have good interest. 
but you have to be responsible and the bank will not give you the amount of money that you want for buying your dream house if you don't have this previously organized. Is there anywhere that you would recommend that people avoid buying a house here in Ecuador? I have a specific tip for that, but I will leave it for maybe the end of the video. So the places that I will recommend to avoid buying a house into are they called rich places? The, these are the places that the municipalities or the planification department of the city. This is land that is not meant to be for housing. This is land that maybe is ideal for industrial use, maybe for commercial use, but not for residential use. So what's gonna happen? If you buy a house that is too close to an industry, you're gonna have pollution around your home and you don't want that. You don't want to be like laying around your house, like doing your chores, and then you're smelling something industrial, something hard. It's not good for you, it's not good for your family, it's not good for your lungs, it's not good. It's not pleasant either. And another thing about places that you should avoid are risk places. This is places that nothing should be built onto because the land is not stable. So maybe in an earthquake, it's going to collapse. Maybe uh, these places are usually around some rivers and they are around some lands so that the quality of the soil is not meant for construction purposes. I wouldn't recommend and it's kind of forbidden to, so you should always avoid this. It doesn't matter if you see a house and it's, and it's pretty and it's maybe too cheap and that's maybe the reason, but yeah. That, that could be it. What tips would you give someone from outside Ecuador coming into Ecuador to buy a house? What exact tips do you think would help them in the process? First of all, I think when you are in another country and you're coming from a foreign place, you are afraid of how legal is the state of a house. So the first thing that I would do is to go to the municipality facilities. You're going to the property register department or the planification department those are the places where you can ask. I saw this house located over there, so what is the legal state of the property? They're gonna tell you, and this is public information, so it's free, and they have to give it to you, about the house has already a mortgage, the house is mortgage-free, the house is maybe in a conflict between a dead person, maybe it's like there are some people that are claiming that the house is there, or the person that is trying to sell this house to you is not the real owner of the house. So this is the first thing you can do. Because when you are negotiating, when you are trying to buy a house, the seller is going to tell you, so I will need this amount of money to go to a notary, to make the, the papers of the house so I can give it to you. And, and that's all right, that's okay, that, that's how it works. And the seller also needs to be sure that you're going to buy a house, okay? But you, as a future homeowner, you have to be sure that the money that you're investing is it, it's safely invested. So this is the main thing. Second thing, you are already in the municipality facilities. So you're gonna ask the land that the house is into, what is the meaning of the house or the denomination of the land where the house is. So maybe it, it's, it is in these residential uh, places that I said earlier, so that's good. You have to avoid risk places. In Puerto Viejo and in Manta, you can just go to the online page. They have a map online where you can see all of these risk places. Maybe they are in red or in red color, so you can avoid buying over there. They have these green or maybe blue colors. Those are the residential places and those are safe places for you to buy. Something else that you can try is that you can hire a real estate agent. So this is something really good, but you have to hire the real estate agent for you, like as a buyer. Because if you're going to hire a real estate agent that is working for a seller or for several sellers, they're going to maybe try to give you the places that they're selling and that's totally okay because that's their job. But if you hire them for you, you can explain to them, well, maybe. I am looking for this kind of house, I am looking for this kind of place, maybe I want to live in front of the sea, maybe I don't want to live in front of the sea, maybe I want to go to the countryside. And because you're hiring them, they're going to, to make their commission from you because this is going to have a cost for you, but it's, it's good for you, your overall investment. 
So here what is going to happen is that the real estate agent is going to search for the exact and specific place that you're looking for. So that, that could be a good option. If you're planning to spend an amount of money in the real estate agent, obviously. Or if you're already here, you can go to the music facilities. Or if you're not here yet, maybe go online. And that's, that's good too. Right now we have a lot of social networks and it's really common to post the houses that we're selling online. You can ask for an English agent. I, I would say maybe 60% of the rest of the people that are working in that market, they have an English speaker person. Thank you very much, Mario Jose, for helping us out today and giving us all this useful information. Hopefully one day I can buy a house, maybe. But in the meantime, it's good to have this information for people who are coming over here. Thank you so much. Leaving the city to record this video was a blast, especially since I was able to hang out with Mario Jose and she was able to give us all this valuable information. If you're interested in checking out other housing projects that she has, or if you want more information on buying a house, you can check out her Instagram. The link will be in the description. I really hope this video gave you valuable information on buying a house, and if you're interested in any other Ecuador information, make sure you subscribe, and you know how it is. Make sure you drink lots of water, get ready to buy your dream house in Ecuador, and as always, ace out.